Unlock the power of worship to transform the atmosphere around you. Join me and some special guests as we rediscover the supernatural importance of worship. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, worship is a powerful expression of our faith and adoration, but is it more than just music? And what does it mean to worship God in spirit and in truth? Well, today I've got a great panel with me to take a look at those important questions and more. First joining me around the table is Michael Bethany. Oh, hey, Mikey. hey, this is your first time at the table. This is my oh, first wow. time. I can't believe you let me come to the table. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. I'm, I'm not going to get in trouble. Table. I'm got you. Behave. You do so much lead uh, worship at Gateway. Mm. Uh, you travel and do music work with Fred Hammond. It's just been, it's been a, just a, a great opportunity for you in so many different venues. Yeah, it's been amazing. God's been so faithful to me. I just, I just think about being a little kid in a storefront church and dreaming about what God might do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now years later, we won't say how many years, but years later. Ten years later. Just a few years <laughs> later, a few short years seeing what God has done. Yeah, it's doors. amazing. And, and not just all those doors, but this door, being yeah. with you guys, we've been doing this yeah. together for a long time, and yeah. I'm so, so grateful. Oh, well, we're grateful to have you. And our own Joe Nanowski, music director for Joni Table Talk, yes. and other things as well, yes. writes great songs. Yes, thank you for that. Thank you for the opportunity. Music's always been a part of my life. Uh, I started taking piano lessons when I was about seven, but I remember kind of like you, Michael, just early on, just always being drawn to mm -hmm. music. I love sports too, but I was a chubby little seven-year-old and my mom said, practice the piano, maybe someday, you know. <laughs> so I played sports all through high, through high school and college, got a marketing yeah. degree, and music is what God had. So yeah. I'm wow. just grateful to be yeah. a part. And I remember I used to watch, I'd turn on and see you singing on TV and I'd say, I really like this. I felt feel something about this I know, person. You told me that. Never story, knowing huh? that someday I would be connected. Never so. knowing. I never knew I'd be sitting yeah. here doing this as yeah, well. Yeah, well, I think we it's all like feel that. Amazing, it's just like, for sure. How? Kendra we're Kelly Dean came hey. along about 19 years of age, yeah. and uh, she's a few years older than that now, mm -hmm. but came to sing with me. Yeah, it's been such Travel an awesome with me. experience. Yes, we've my been dad. all over the world. Yes, together. yeah. I remember the very first time you called me. You're like, "So, do you want to go to London, England?" I was like. Ah! <laughs> that was so exciting. Yeah. But um, ever since I was a little bitty girl, worship has always been a huge part of my yeah. life. My dad, yeah. Leroy Kelly, you know, um, is a pastor and he has an amazing voice. And his attitude whenever he worships is he just puts it all out there. You know, and he's like, if yeah. you don't understand what you're singing about, then don't sing it because your job is to minister to people when you're up there. So make sure you understand what you're talking about and allow people to feel God's yeah. presence flowing through you in those moments. Yeah. So he was all about being vulnerable and belting it out. I love that. And we're you know, going to be talking about that for sure. <laughs> Cindy Murdoch has been a friend hey. for 30 plus years. We met when we were yes, five years old. We did. We shared. Um, Not the truth. But anyway, we, um, <laughs> we've been singing together for a long time. We have yeah. been. We have. And worship I, is important. It is us. so yeah. important. And I think when we understand what worship is all about, we understand the life-changing process that happens as yes. we worship within us, yeah. as well as how it may impact others that are in the presence of it. Yeah. But it's changed my life. I remember one of my first recording projects, I came to where you were. You did. To Kentucky. You out in the house. Kentucky. And that was Kentucky. <laughs> God, you came to the promised land. Kentucky, that's right. And that was when um, there was no digital anything. No. I mean, the engineer would sit back there and get the thing, and you hope you sang it and right. I did a big, long take, I think. That yeah, yeah. they like, did you get that? You know, y'all don't know what that Two is. But that, we'll get, we'll get um, Josh yeah. and Jason to explain that. Uh, Joshua Brown, who is my son in love and Australian and keyboard player for Planet Shakers for many yeah. years. Long, long time. Yeah, but worship was something 
We, I don't know, we may have a video we can show of Josh playing as a little boy. I don't Aww. know, I'm just teasing. Be sweet. But I mean, it did start. We, it, it start. Is this going to be one of these shows? <laughs> Beautiful mother in love. Yes, it's going to be. Here we she is. has material. Yeah, she she has, has material. Just remember that. I've got that, you know, back here. Yeah. No, worship and music have, have been such a big part of my life and almost like a late lifesaver to mm -hmm. me. Yes. To, yeah. to get into, into that spot and I know we're going to talk about all that on this show and I'm really excited about it. Yeah, for sure. Jason Crabb from Kentucky. 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 <laughs> what tell, about Tell it? everybody about that. We're, the way we used to have You're to record between a Kentucky record. sandwich right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Aussie. Yeah. That's right. But I mean recording back in the in, in, in the 80s, late 80s. Yeah. It's so a totally different It world. was totally different. The, mm -hmm. the first time that we recorded, I, well I saw it was with my father and that was in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Uh, he recorded at Hilltop Studio in, Na in Nashville, Tennessee, uh -huh. and they did. They had the big yeah. two-inch tape, yeah. 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 and that's how, you know, Spins you had, and if you cut, you had to actually use it with a thing. Now, that's right. now people are doing it in their bedroom, you know. Yeah, um, on their computer. Uh, with a little computer. And they uh, have a machine if they're not the right pitch. Yeah. And just kind they of just, oh, you don't even have to Sure, for yeah. sure. Well, it's just, i like for each of you maybe to share a, uh, uh, kind of what worship means to you, why it's so important. Um, we know from the Bible that worship can be powerful. Mm -hmm. David right. was unbridled in his worship mm -hmm. of the Lord. If you read Psalms in the Bible, you'll, you'll see and understand a lot about David, but he was a worshiper. He played a key role, of course, in the Israelites' defeat of Jericho. So how do we live a life of worship and what does that look like? So, Jason, let's just start with you. You love God, but when you sing, um, it comes from a place uh, and, and has an anointing on it that's yeah. different than, say, s some other singers I may listen to. Mm -hmm. And I know you don't take that for granted. What is that? And is that part of the relationship you have with God? Absolutely. You know, I, sometimes when we talk about worship, we think of a specific style mm -hmm. sound of music. Mm -hmm. It's not that at all. No. If we talk about one of the greatest worshipers, you wouldn't think that it would be a shepherd boy. Right. It wouldn't be somebody out in the field that's tending to sheep. Yeah. But he did it in his everyday living. Yes. Now, and that's the where I, I call that. Yes. So when I'm singing a song, or I'm with someone, I think, okay, my personal uh, experience. Yeah. Let's say, for instance, I'm singing through the fire or something like that. Mm -hmm. My personal experience is we've walked through some tough times. Yeah. These people have walked through some tough times. Yeah. Now I'm giving glory to God because I've been through it. Yes. And so I'm just giving credit and praise to, yeah. to my Savior. Now, it doesn't sound like a specific worship tune, like, mm -hmm. you know, like a, right. a, a, a Tomlin or whatever it is. But that's the unique thing about worship. Mm -hmm. He knows it's me because he created me and I'm giving him glory, yes. so that's worship. Yes. And yes. so I think that that's an everyday life. I sing, some people mm -hmm. play baseball or basketball and they worship God with their gifts because they give him glory and credit yes. for it. Yeah. So I think that that's it's just different forms of everyday life. Yeah. Um, but I'm, What's your favorite like spot like to have your quiet time with My God? quiet time? You, it's really different. Okay. I figured it would be. Along sure. With <laughs> okay, so my favorite quiet time is me in the truck, just driving down the road yeah. in the middle of the night. Sometimes I get to do that and go in different places. Yeah. And um, and I'm I know this is going to sound crazy, and I'll probably get mail over this or okay. whatever text messages. But there are certain things that, like I will I will listen to, maybe old country music that reminds me of a, of, a, of a time in my life and I reminisce about it. Yeah. And I'm going, and the next thing I know, I'm going, God, thank you. Mm, yeah. I'm like, then I realize, why am I, what, what's this, you know? But I think, uh, or some of the old Southern gospel stuff that I grew up on, you know, yeah, yeah. singing, you know, um, or I'll listen to a, a radio station or look for a radio station. It's just just those moments yeah. I, I reflect. And we have conversations. Yeah. And then sometimes there's no music at all. Right. It's just me and him going down the road. There you go. Mm. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Michael, 
Tell us a little bit about your understanding of worship and how it works for you personally. Um, wow, that is such an that's such a big question. So as a kid, I ask big questions. You, you do. That's <laughs> an, yeah. It's an amazing question. So as a kid, I grew up thinking that worship was music. I mean, you go to church and you go to church to worship. Yeah. And I just grew up because because that's what we did. I thought it was that. But as I grew into my relationship with God, I understood that worship is how I respond to God. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah. It's just how I respond because God always initiates worship with his goodness. Mm -hmm. He's he's good to us. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. If you're breathing, mm -hmm. that's a gift. Yeah. Yeah. And how I respond to God with the breath that I've got mm -hmm. becomes worship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's I think there's different levels to it because everyone's walking through a different season of life, yeah. different level of life. And so it may be really deep to you, but to me it just might be simply gratitude. Yeah. Yeah. And just being aware. And like you said, it's giving credit to God for the good things he has he done, done. Yeah. and That's responding it. simply to that yeah. with a thank you. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful when that thank you takes a form of That's melody. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because music soothes the soul. Mm -hmm. So to sing thanksgiving into your soul yes. is a beautiful thing. And listening to someone like Jason Crabb, one of his songs, and, and just hearing those lyrics, because sometimes those lyrics are the communication you wish you could say, articulate or say, but you don't have the words, and a song could be the perfect way yeah. to express a simple thank you to God. Yes. Yeah. So I think that's where I start from, yeah. and I like to go as deep as I can and stay as long as I can, yeah. you know? Yeah. I, 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 rem I remember I really... I wanna walk... Yes! There we go. <laughs> yeah. And talk... Come on. It's well, that's you. the thing about it. It's just, it's, it gets you. It's catchy. You start singing and, and you want to stay. I, I, just when I spend time with God, I start in a simple way. I may say sometimes, I'm just going to go in my little prayer room for a few moments. Yeah. 30 minutes later. <laughs> yeah. Maybe an hour, maybe. Yeah. I may get caught up in that because when you start to reflect on God's yeah. goodness yeah. Yeah. and you start singing those and songs, And how much better are you coming out 30 minutes later than you were coming I'm in? I'm always oh, wow. in a much better mood. Much better. <laughs> much better. <laughs> After I've spent time with God in my personal time of worship. It makes a huge difference. It makes yeah. a big difference. It makes difference. a huge difference for me. And the Lord told me the other day, I'm walking on the treadmill every morning early and I put my pods in and sing to the top of my lungs, because you need to in the morning if you're going to come and do TV, right? You want right, your voice yeah. warmed up. And um, I remember the other day, he was like, yeah, I was like, I, I've been missing you. I've spent some time with Aww. you. And I said, okay, I'm coming to the treadmill. But he really does long to have that time with us. Mm -hmm. We should yes. long to have time yes. with him, but he really longs to have that intimacy with us. Absolutely. Right? And that's what that song you were just singing was yeah. about. That's why I love that song. That so song much. early. We're going to record that yeah. song, by the way. Yes. Uh, Michael's song that he wrote, it's it is called so good. Walk With You, Thank right? You. Yeah, Walk With You, that's what it is. Yeah, every time he comes, like, I say, sing Walk With You. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Joshua Brown, you grew up in Australia, but I mean, I have video of you um, yeah, singing so and precious. playing worship. Well, she's but not letting the music... that video go. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there was a little video. video. <laughs> Three times we're seeing Hopefully that. they can't find it. it upstairs and it ain't coming out. <laughs> but I mean, that was in your heart as a little boy. Yeah. That and looking at airplanes. I mean, yes. those were the two things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, that and going to the beach. Yeah, <laughs> worship for me, it, it's, it's a two-way thing. It's relationship. Yeah. And, um, you know, we all face different pressures. We all have different things that mm -hmm. uh, we, we come up against that we can't control. True. But what we can control is what's in here yeah. and what's in here. And uh, sometimes that can be like an unbridled, uncontrollable thing. But when I focus mm -hmm. on Jesus, when I'm mm -hmm. purposeful, and I'm like, God, I don't understand what I'm going through right now, but I just want to focus on you and I just want to thank you yeah. for the breath in my lungs right now. Yeah. I want to thank you for my yeah. beautiful for wife. Life, yeah. I want to thank you for yeah. my job. I want to thank you for my car. And you just start pouring out your heart to mm -hmm. Jesus. Worship's just a heart attitude, but when we pour out our heart to him mm -hmm. and we're communing with God, we start to, something changes on the yes. inside. Yeah. And so my surroundings may not change, mm -hmm. but how I deal with it does. And I believe the worship of Jesus Christ is the way that that can happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Joseph Nanowski, your mother, she did make you practice the piano. Yes. You are now proud of that fact. I'm grateful. I we all little, are. I put my, <laughs> thank you, Jason. I put my little football helmet on that I got when I was seven years old. Again, I was chubby little, no athletic ability. And I said, Mom, I think I want to play sports. She said, sweetheart, 
you, you learn your piano, learn guitar, and, oh. and you can play all the sports you want. You just have to have good grades and good piano lessons. Uh -huh. The real deal was practice or die, but yeah. I like to tell it <laughs> the other way. Yeah. But I'm so, I'm so grateful for that. I, I, I was raised in church, and I was always around music, and I would want to go up and play the organ or play the piano. I couldn't then, but I would aspire to that, so I was always in me. I was recording. I'd record little things on a cassette deck and then record it. I was yeah. doing the multi-track tape. I didn't know what I was doing. Y'all yeah. don't know what a cassette tape is. We'll, tell you, we'll yeah. explain that later. Yeah. 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 It, was, it was always there. And what I'm so grateful for, your daughter saying, great is thy faithfulness yes. today. That it, was beautiful. On, a, on another program. It was absolutely beautiful. Yes. And Joni, you were sharing one time about uh, re Paul. It's uh, Paul's one of the writers in the Bible. And, and, and he said something. He said, I've run a good race. I've fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. And I've thought many a times, I haven't kept the faith, but the faith has kept me. The faith has kept me. Mm -hmm. And music has been a big part of that. Mm -hmm. And I call it an on-ramp. God's got all these on-ramps to help us. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes it's in a church that we have corporate worship. That's this yeah. awesome on-ramp, you know? Mm -hmm. But how about just the on-ramp of the sunrise coming up? I pulled over for a sunset. I've had, I pulled the car over to look at stars. I've, I've all the on-ramps God has for us. And music has always been interwoven yeah. into yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be mowing into the lawn. Into creation, yeah. Yeah, I'd be mowing the lawn and little songs start coming to me. I'd be working out and little songs, little, I have all these song babies, these little song orphans, us writers, we have that. You know, I've got hundreds of these little song babies, but I feel like they are. I'm going to call them like a divine download. I feel like it's heaven just trying to connect me. Yeah. To, yeah. And for me, that's, as a worship leader, I've been in a church where I've led worship for many years. I feel like that's what I'm doing, as I'm being an on-ramp. I'm just helping connect people to their source, yeah. to, to, to yeah. God, to hope. Mm. Maybe they need wisdom, maybe they need correction, but somehow that music, that universal yeah. language of music... It opens up their heart. What opens is your, up their heart. What is your kind of private, quiet time with the Lord? Okay, can I, I'll set it up like this. I have a dear pastor who passed away, a, one of the greatest men of God I ever walked with, Pastor Ricky Tejada. Yeah. He passed this last year. He and Marcus are up there. He and Marcus, about the same time. Yeah, yeah they're up there doing deals that we know nothing <laughs> of. And I'm, we're grateful. They're negotiating on every level for us. <laughs> pastor Ricky would stand in the pulpit of the church, and he would say the name of Jesus, he would, and he would begin to weep and cry. Mm -hmm. And this is a big, big strong yeah. Louisiana fullback, running back, athlete. Mm -hmm. successful in the corporate world, and now he's in the ministry world for years. And I would sometimes say, God, why, why don't I have that? And he said, I let you feel me through people, through smiles, through laughter, through all the, all the pain I've had in my life. He's given me a lot of laughter. Mm -hmm. And he's just, so I realized for me, to answer your question, it's how I live every day of my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to tell you, I don't have 30 minutes or an hour a day that I'm quiet in a, in a, but I have as many waking hours as I can, as many as I'm aware of that I'm a I'm trying to stop and turn to him and connect with him. And then there will be those seasons, those throughout a day where mm -hmm. I'm intentional. I'm mm -hmm. spending time reading scriptures, reading inspirational things to, to feed the That's inner, good. the person, the, the think part that Josh was talking about to get my thinking right. Yeah. So yeah. For me, it wor worship is worth ship. Jason said it. What do we give worth to? Yeah. And I try to not be too far from honoring God. And if I feel like I'm getting far from that, I start being thankful, like Josh <laughs> said. What am I grateful for? Thank you for this cup of water. Thank yeah, you for this little cup. Like Steve that. Martin yeah. in that movie, whatever it was. Thank, thank thank you. I love this. my cup. I just need my cup and yeah. my little... So That's just good. A heart of gratefulness. That's awesome. Yeah. So, you know, and one of the reasons why we're talking about this today is because... We want you to understand that God loves you so yes. much. Yeah. Yes. And he wants to spend time with you. Mm -hmm. yes. Like the creator of all things <laughs> wants to have an intimate relationship with you. You're like, wow, I can't even fathom that. Mm -hmm. But I, t I share this story all the time. But my grandfather, who um, called out on the Lord when he was 19 years old in a tool and dime mill in Greenville, South Carolina, he didn't have know anything about church or didn't know how to pray correctly. He didn't have a Bible. But he knew there was something empty on the inside of him. And he knelt down at a water fountain on a Monday morning. And he said, God, if you're there. Mm -hmm. And really, that's where it if starts for yeah. you. God, if you're there. And that's all you have to do. The onus is that's not right. on so me to good. prove who he is. Yeah. He will reveal himself to you. But there's just something about having a heart that's really open to um, have a relationship with God that 
kneels down or sits down or in your car or wherever you are, wherever you're watching this, and you say, okay, God, I'm ready. Yeah. I want to I want to interact with you, and I want you to reveal yourself to me, and he will. And he does that um, through the person of, of Jesus. Yes. And, I mean, all you have to say is, Jesus, I yes. need you, yeah. and, yes. and he will come. And I've, I've yeah. interviewed thousands of people over 35 years of ministry, and uh, the testimonies are so incredible that when people pray a simple prayer, Jesus, will you come into my life today? That's it. Um, dramatic things happen. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Everybody seeing the table has experienced what I'm talking about. So we're talking about this because once you do that, there's just something about continuing that relationship every day and just taking a moment to be thankful, to be grateful and say, okay, lead me today, show me today, guide me today. And then there's the word of God and then there's church and then there's worship. There's mm -hmm. all these things that yeah. can help you grow and mature into what all God has called you to do. Yep. So you just be open. You've been searching, you've been looking. This is what you've been searching for. Some, some people think that they have to have it together before yeah. they call on Jesus. Yeah. And I've heard people say that, especially back home in Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to be no hypocrite. I'm not, and I, and I go, I'm going to okay. clean myself up. I'm going to clean myself up. I'm like, how are you going to do that? Yeah. Yeah. If you could do that, why would we need Jesus? Exactly. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's the whole point yeah. of him coming to earth, right. giving his life in simple terms yeah. Yeah. to set us all free. Yeah. And, you know, you don't have to have it all together. Matter of fact, even, and this might sound a little strange, but David was, again, back to the mm -hmm. worship leader of, of everybody that goes to, man, he was up and down. Yeah. I mean, he was like, one minute he's going, yeah. hallelujah, you're the yeah. great, and and then the next he's next saying, next God chapter he's going, why are you persecuting me? <laughs> why are you killing me? Next chapter he's going, hallelujah, there's none like you, you know, and that's... Yeah. And he's like, kill my yeah. enemies. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, that's usually within a chapter. It's like yeah. the first chapter, yeah. my yeah. enemies yeah. are surrounded. Where are you, yeah. God, by the end of the chapter? You're the glory in the lifter of my head. Yeah. So, the awesome. so the neat thing about this is, uh, like, a lot of people, and I think, the, I think it's an attack of the enemy that does this, it makes people think that Christianity uh, it is people that think they've got it together. So yeah. they, they, no, we are... We are testifying that we are flawed in need of someone yes. that helps us. Yes. That's all we're doing. We're just right. a testimony yes, that we need Jesus. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to know that. I, I just sometimes I think that the wrong representation of who Christ is, you know, yeah. and uh, you know, no, yeah. he's like, come here. Yes. Yeah. You know, yes. Let me help you through That's this. Right. That's yeah. right. Maybe, well, maybe the first true <laughs> act of worship is just saying what you said, help me. Yeah. Help yeah. me. There you help. go. Absolutely. That's so good. Your quiet place I know about. Oh. <laughs> you do, but you know what's been on my heart to share? That one of the seasons of my life in worship, when my world was falling apart, right, and I was helpless, right, in my time of singing to the Lord, whether it was at church or at home, I'm very visual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we all remember the story, and there is a story, if you don't know about it, in the Bible where there was a woman she had taken, I think, about a year's savings or her work. Mm -hmm. And she came to where Jesus was and she broke the alabaster box of perfume and poured it over his feet. And she wept. Yeah. And she washed his feet with her hair. And during my moments of life, that season where my world was falling apart, those moments yeah. of worship where I visually could see myself mm -hmm on my face, yes. around his feet, yeah. just being so grateful for what he's brought me through yeah. and that I knew he would bring me completely through. He was like all I had. Yeah. So I would continually have that visual of just weeping at his yeah. feet and just, just letting him know that he was everything, everything and everything I needed. I just knew he could bring it about in my life. Yeah, yes. yeah. Wow. And so... I do relate to the daily things, and then I know there are seasons when we absolutely are on our face, yeah. crying oh, yeah. and weeping yeah. Yeah. at his feet as visually as yeah. we can see it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I just, to, to tell you, he turned my world around in a yeah. most magnificent way. Yeah, and you yes. worshiped him through it. Through it. I, oh, I in, the, in the darkest moment, that's when we worship him, I think, and meet him and he shows up in a way that is just unbelievable. Yeah. He literally carries us. Yeah. And yeah. it's what he did for you. Quickly, yeah. your little moment of yeah. worship. Well, intimacy. worship, it grounds me. 
Yeah. It grounds me so that I know that I'm being spirit led and I'm being led in his truth. I'm not being emotionally led mm -hmm. because this world wants to take all my attention and my focus and get all caught up in it. Yeah. But if I can do what it says in Matthew 6, 6, and this is really how a pure worship starts is it just says, here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so that you won't be tempted to role play with God, <laughs> right? Just be there as simply and as honestly as you can manage. The focus is going to shift from you mm -hmm. to God and you will begin to sense his grace. And that's what worship is, yes, being so alone with him and putting it back, all the focus on him. I always think yeah. of a song to go with everything y'all are saying, so I'm thinking about Alabaster Box yeah. with you and that, that yeah. line in there is, you weren't there the night he found me. Yeah. Oh, you did yeah. not feel what I felt yeah. when he wrapped his loving yeah. arms around me. What a song. You don't know yeah. the cost. Yeah. You don't know the cost yeah. of the oil in that's this good. Alabaster Box. Well, we are out of time. Uh, I want you to remember that worship is about the posture of our heart yes. towards God. That's what he looks at is our heart. And so many of you say, well, I just, you know, like Jason said, I'm so glad you said that. You're like, you don't know, I am in a mess right now. You <laughs> cannot even believe what's going on. And, and the Lord's saying to you, just come to me just as you are. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and yeah. I will give you rest. Yeah. He is your source of like identity, yeah. peace, joy, love, and goodness. And how does your life reflect all of that? If you're watching today, you need to realign your heart with the Lord. Maybe you just need to meet the Lord for the first mm -hmm. time. Um, again, that simple prayer, Jesus, I need you, really it's just that simple. But there is a prayer line number on the screen. We do have amazing prayer partners standing by, always ready to pray with you. And I want to thank all of these great worshipers for joining me at the table. Thank you all for sharing. Let us know how this uh, table talk touched your life. Leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. Now, we couldn't let Jason leave without doing a song for us. So here's one of his new songs, Jason Crabb singing, Do It For You. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. God bless you. So if you need a highway through, you see a mountain to be moved. He did it for me. He can do it for you. He's a God of endless miracles. I know you've been asking, hoping and praying that somehow he will make the wrong things right. Well, the heavens been less, something is changing, so let me be the first to testify.